Hello, we should be live and everyone should be able to hear me, which is fantastic. Can I get a couple people in chat letting me know if they can hear me? I appreciate that. Uh, hi, it's Tyler. Hey, Tyler, how's it going? I recognize your profile photo from Discord. Thank you for letting me know I can hear you. So real quick, I definitely need to turn off those speakers. Um, appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Noshi, for sharing it in the pre uh, in the chat. Chat. Uh, name's Gabriel. How's it going? Yeet. Made 30K. Yes, I did. And that is what this is about. So I know this is late. I apologize. Life's been a bit crazy. But yeah, I'm, I made it to 30,000. Uh, we're, we're almost halfway to 40,000. Can't wait for it. Thank you, Kings and Generals. I appreciate the support you've shown the channel. I really appreciate that. Um, I uh, The 9,000 subs almost this last month has been ridiculous, uh, more than I ever thought I would have total. So I, I just want to say for everyone supporting the channel, uh, thank you so much. You know, it means the world. Um, and trust me, more and more energy is going to be going into the channel. After I move, settle down, uh, my job's getting a little easier. Um, I expect a slow transition towards YouTube in my distant future, uh, full time, distant future, but it, it's becoming more and more realistic and possible, um, which I uh, appreciate. And on top of that, the community is better than ever. Uh, there was a video posted today that was deleted. I, uh, I well, not deleted, made private and then put in the discord. Uh, that was because the comment section kind of turned into a dumpster fire. I did not have the time or energy while I was at work to moderate it. Uh, it's one of those real life YouTube life crossover things uh, that I had to <laughs> just end up making it private and throwing it into there. But let's go ahead and get into you all's comments. Um, is there anything else I want to say? Yes. Uh, so we had a fantasy news yesterday and we're getting one again tomorrow with how much uh, fantasy news is going. Thank you, Joey, for the dollar. I appreciate that, man. Uh, every every little bit means the world. Uh, because there's been so much. So there's legitimately another fantasy news tomorrow because there was so much and I felt like a lot of it needed to be talked about. So there you go. There's going to be another one. I promise this channel is not going to turn into purely fantasy news. We're also getting a review of the first in the Powder Mage trilogy pretty soon. I'm almost done with that. I'm loving it. And I actually really like those books so far. And you're going to be getting a review um, of the uh, Master and Margarita, which I'm super pumped for. Um, so yeah, uh, and I'm glad to see a couple people are saying they're, they're starting Wheel of Time. I've been getting a lot of people tweeting at me they're starting Wheel of Time recently. I appreciate that, everybody. Um, but let's, yeah, Powder Mage, that'll be coming soon. I'm excited, trust me, I'm just excited for that one as you guys are. Um, right after that, I'm going to be reading Shadowland, and then after that uh, is going to be some more foreign. But the Master and Margarita review might be a Patreon-only video, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you guys know. Oh, my God. Thank you, Nablus. Uh, no one more deserving. Happy move. I just got done with it, and it sucks. Hey, I, dude, moving is insanity, and I'm glad that you are at least got it over with. And thank you so much for the 25. That's ridiculously generous. Um, yeah, go subscribe to Nablus if you have not already. I've been digging your videos, uh, especially the one you just did recently on um, uh, Wheel of Time and Game of Thrones. That was great. Uh, thank you, Roger Davis, for the five. I appreciate it. If you're going to throw in some money, guys, add, ask a question or something. I mean, make it make it so I can at least engage with you a little bit because I appreciate it. Uh, Pips, uh, he was doing a little cokehead run around earlier. I got no idea where he's at now. Um, he's been going bonkers recently uh the thing, is, the thing is he's a very clumsy cat though so he like tries to do backflips off the wall and he just lands on his side he's the only cat i know that cannot land on his feet and it's he, he's the only cat i've ever seen who doesn't land on his feet and it's that's his life <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much been it um let's see. thank you glad to see some more people starting wheel and don't worry pips is happy and healthy i'm aware he's a bit overweight i'm taking care of that he'll be him and I are both are going on a more strict fitness routine soon because uh, uh, <laughs> I've been uh, not looking my best recently either because the life's been so, so much. Um, uh, let's see. If the Wheel of Time is too hard to read, what tips would you give to read the books? Audiobooks are uh, absolutely a valid option. Don't ever let someone tell you they're not, especially since Michael Craver and Kate Redding 
do such an incredible job. I'm dyslexic, so my reading is split about half and half. I do about half physical reading. You guys are actually perched right now on the Powder Mage trilogy and a new copy of The Way of Kings I bought. Um, yeah, the Wheel of Time audiobooks are amazing. I, it's my like, I, it's my dream to meet and talk with Michael and uh, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. They both seem so nice. Um, do you think Brandon Sanderson should finish Song of Ice and Fire? I saw that tweet talking about that. That was great. Um, and I, I would absolutely... Uh, I'm down for Brandon Sanderson to finish most things, but A Song of Ice and Fire is so outside of his total wheelhouse. It's one of the few things I don't think he could pull off. Um, I don't think he could possibly uh, nail that. Let's see. We got a lot of questions coming in here, guys. Thank you so much for the for the engagement. Um, laser pointer fitness workout. So here's the thing. If I turn on a laser pointer with pips, he starts making noises like my brother has two cats and he even said like his cats don't make those noises it kind of weirds me out it sounds like predator when he takes off his mask and starts doing the clicketing uh yeah i'm i it, i don't mess with pips in a laser pointer anymore because it's too creepy it's it's too creepy um uh let's see you got a weird cat i do have a weird cat he doesn't land on his feet and he makes uh noises i would be totally down for uh, Joe Abercrombie to finish A Song of Ice and Fire. Joe Abercrombie, I need to do an author deep dive on him, but it's always, uh, there's not a, there's not a whole lot of information available yet. Like he's getting bigger, so there will be soon, but with like medium successful authors, and he's not medium, he's, he's well above medium, but like people who aren't on the George R. R. Martin level, it's hard to dig up enough information to make like a full author deep dive. I had the same problem with uh, Brent Weeks, He's a great author. I love his books, but like if you go to his Wikipedia, I could literally read the whole thing and it wouldn't even be a five minute video. Um, thank you so much for the dono. Holy crap. Uh, uh, Sarah, I appreciate it so much. Sarah Bernard. Uh, <laughs> I try to keep it 100. Uh, I don't always though. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Dwayne Franklin. Uh, love your videos. Are you going to read The Wind Through the Keyhole? Uh, I haven't even heard of that but I will uh, definitely add it to my ever growing list. Uh, correlations go to spoiler con with how much travel and everything I've been doing recently. There's no way I can fit it in. I got to do some more travel soon uh, to go visit some family on the East coast. So I, I, there's no way I can fit it into my current schedule. Um, I wish I could, cause I love everyone who's involved in that. But um, Oh, other shout outs. If you haven't checked out the Black Tower or the uh, um, Wheel Time Spoilers podcast, please do. If you haven't checked out the White Tower podcast, please do. They're amazing. Um, really digging everything they do. Uh, would you do a Dune review video? I already have a Dune video, but I actually plan on doing an updated Dune video because a lot of my older reviews haven't re aged super well. I wasn't nearly as good as communicating my thought back then. Uh, oh, I'll just doubling down for the people who are here. I said, also go subscribe to Nablus. He's amazing. Um, Daniel Green, is Mistborn Era 2 worth the read or should I go straight to Stormlight Archive? I would do Stormlight first. That's just my opinion. Uh, HP Lovecraft fan? Not the person, but the writings. Yes. <laughs> uh, have you read Night Angel Trilogy by Brent Weeks? Yes, I have. Uh, I would consider Lightbringer far superior, but I think I've seen quotes from Branded where he also thinks they're far superior. Gentlemen Bastards is absolutely okay and should not be censored. Sorry, the Glacier, you got censored there. Uh, I would go Gentlemen Bastards. Uh, he, they asked, should they read Gentlemen Bastards or Witcher first? I would go Gentlemen Bastards uh, purely because it's less books and you can probably get them out of the way faster. And I find them to be maybe one of the fastest reads uh, I've come across in the fantasy genre. Uh, <laughs> just got a text from Josh. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, YouTube doesn't like the word uh, bastards, unfortunately. They they censor that uh, pretty aggressively. Best advice for starting a YouTube channel. I, I try to say this carefully because I know this could come across poorly, and I really don't want it to come across poorly. So do not, like, let's say you're trying to start a BookTube channel. Do not do what's typical for BookTube because I got legitimately, I feel like, held back by trying to be a booktuber when it's not what I really wanted. If you want to be a booktuber, great, because your passion will show through and that's where you'll shine. But I kind of got lumped in with booktube. And so for a long time, I just did booktube things. And while I do love booktube, I'm so many friends that are booktubers. They're amazing people. They work so hard and their videos are so great. It's not 
what I'm passionate about doing. I'm way more passionate about fantasy news, author deep dives, real things that are about information. Um, and so if you're about to start a YouTube channel, like write down five video series like you would be interested in doing and then do those. Don't think, oh, I'm going to book YouTube or somebody go do a book too. I think that's why you see so many vloggers burn out because they're always like, oh, I'm going to be a vlogger every day. I'm just going to show my life. And then they realize that's not sustainable unless you're a millionaire who's doing incredible things every day. And so they just completely uh, burn out. Uh, whatever you do, just release the video. Yeah, that's also really good advice from Kings and Generals, who has way more subs than me, and is someone you should definitely wait wor uh, words of uh, weigh the words of heavier. Uh, it's it's important to get stuff going, get content out. Uh, I mean, I didn't delete my earliest videos because even though they're uh, not nearly as quality, it's important to be in the algorithm, have content, and get your personality, your representation as forefront as you possibly can. Uh, what unexplored Song of Ice and Fire location do you want to see? I actually talked about something like that similarly recently in World Hoppers, I believe. Basically for every default fantasy world, I want the most insane places you hear about that are never fully fleshed out. I want them in the book, man. That'll be in my book. Like the craziest places you hear about are never actually visited in fantasy worlds. Like in, in Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire, you hear about the, the distant lands where these these monsters like the, they they sail out to this city and only uh, Eros has come back with items before. I want to go there as the reader. Bring me there. In in Wheel of Time, there's the Madlands. I, I want to go there. Or, they're not called the Madlands. Whatever they're called. Um, just finished eleven twenty two sixty three because of you. Fantastic, Nolan. I'm so glad to hear that. It's uh, worth the read for sure. And I'm glad I've gotten you to pick up some Stephen King if you haven't already before. And you and I need to talk on the Discord eventually. You missed the last Patreon talk, my dude. What's up? Um, another one from Nablus. Have you seen the recent rumor, Mill News, that Moraine has been cast? It's not public yet, but supposedly done deal. I have seen that, but I've had trouble with fake news. I hate using that word, but I've had trouble with that kind of news, making it on fantasy news. So until I see headlines, until I see sources, uh, I'm not putting it on there. I'm trying to get more strict with what I see on a uh, fantasy news. Cause I, I don't like the fact that a few things I've talked about have pretty much just evaporated into thin air and not been real things. Um, would you consider more reading more classics master and Margarita's coming up soon? Um, I'm going to be reviewing more Hemingway soon because I'm actually a huge Hemingway fan. I expect those videos to do terribly, but I am just, uh, I'm a huge Hemingway guy. So I got to get them out there. Uh, wow. Oh man. Chat just kind of broke for me. Uh, what's going on? Uh, let's see. Are you, are these places, are these crazy places so good because they're unknown once they're known? Is it really that special? It's a good point, but I would like to at least try. I mean, it depends on the hands of the author it's in, I'm sure. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's really important. I mean, it's, it's the quality of the author. <laughs> I, I want to see like, so right now this is, this is gonna be a weird side tangent guys, but you got to roll with me here. Okay. Well, if you look at music right now, we're not necessarily in the best caliber of music phase ever, but we're in the most experimental and weird. Like music, there's all kinds of music. If you can think of it, it exists. I want the same thing for writers and authors. I want writers and authors to start doing weirder and weirder things. I want to see more collaboration projects. I think one of the reasons Good Omens was so good was because it was a collab between two of the best authors who have been in the genre. So I want to see more of that kind of stuff. I want to see a, <laughs> I want to see a George R. R. Martin novel that's handed off to Stephen King at one point, and he stands it back. Like, let's get weird with writing. I don't know why people seem hesitant to do that. Um, I know there are collab books out there, but they're really rare and far in between. I don't know. That's just a weird thing. Where I, I want to see more collaborations, especially between these amazing authors. I know it's more of a commitment, but you know, it's hard to, it's really going to be hard to make authors commit on a big project that takes so much time but I want to. How is the progress in your book? Uh, I've decided the way I write is I put big ideas and then slowly fill it out. So right now I'm still kind of in that trickling down to fully filling it out. Um, there are a few sequences actually written, but it's still just a whole lot more of planning every scene, every story beat, and then I'll actually write them through. Um, that's just how my brain goes. The problem is I get stuck in this phase where it's like, I constantly think of better ideas. So I'm constantly changing things at like this root. And so if you change the root, it like slowly trickles down and changes so much more. Um, let's see. 
Do you think sci-fi and fantasy can be integrated successfully without being mediocre at both? I haven't found any that's well done. Well, I mean, it did, it didn't tickle me particularly, but I would say Dune is sci fantasy. Um, I'd say Star Wars is sci fantasy and they're both fine at what they do. Um, they're both, well, Star Wars is not great at sci fantasy, but it's great because of different reasons, at least the original trilogy. Um, so that's, that's an interesting question. I can't think of anything that's great because it's sci fantasy. I can think of a lot of sci fantasy that's just well done, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Let's, yeah, Broken Earth also kind of is a really good bridge. That's a good point. Uh, I would say Dark Tower. Yeah, I'd say that's sci fantasy as well. Um, depends. Depends. A lot of a lot of fantasy is actually getting more sci fi elements um, that I'm coming across. What's your favorite non fantasy book? I think I've answered this before, and if I answer it differently, people will give me crap. But I think I said Old Man in the Sea last time. But I'm going to change it up this time. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show some love to Stranger in a Strange Land because I've been I've been really reminiscing on that book hard. I love Stranger in a Strange Land uh, by Robert Heinlein. Is it Heinlein? Did I just mess up? No, it's Heinlein. Good. Um, Warhammer 40k. I want to. Oh, Nablus has got to go. I'm sorry to see you go, bud. Um, see Crafts and the Success next year at the time. So I don't think I'll be having 1 million by then, but then that nice pipe dream. 100K by then, uh, I would be ecstatic. Let's just hope the, uh, <laughs> let's hope the growth continues. And guys, if you have not already, check out Nablus. His channel is great. And he's more hardcore to uh, uh, Wheel of Time than I am now because uh, I'm branching out more. But don't worry. Wheel of Time content is always going to be coming for me. Uh, the book with the elephant cover on it. That is the best. That is the best book cover ever, and no one can convince me otherwise. Um, uh, yeah, Nables does have a sick channel. It's, it's one of the best. Uh, let's see. Would you be interested if we held a short story writing competitions in the Discord server and had you be the judge of them? Absolutely. As long as people promise not to get their feelings hurt. Because uh, I'm going to be honest and I will be harsh. But yeah, absolutely. I'll not be harsh. I'll be reasonable. <laughs> Which some people consider harsh. But yeah, the Discord server. You guys on the Discord server do so much crazy awesome stuff. Like I... The whole wheel of time quiz thing that just is a thing that Epa puts on that I would no idea that was happening until I got involved with one. Holy crap. Um, so down for that. So let me know if you guys do. I'd love to read your short stories. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. How old am I? I'm 24. And uh, let's see, my birthday's in November. So I'll be 25 and uh, however many months that is. Congrats on 30K. Congrats on your life. You're doing you, you know. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, mods, if you do see any spoilers, please always get rid of them as fast as possible. Um, let's see. If you had to, if you had to be choose any fantasy race, which would you be? Uh, I think the obvious answer there's Kryptonian, my dude. Why would I not be Kryptonian? They are literally Superman, and I don't really think uh, there'd be another one where I could be so powerful. And I'm sorry, but I'm shallow and just want raw power forever so i'll go with that um, let's see dark crystal have you seen it yes i saw the dark crystal trailer it's in the next fantasy news i don't think i talked about my opinions on it much uh but it did really entice me it made me want to go back and really um check out more dark crystal so that'll be a thing uh let's see dude i think we would be awesome if you did something if wheel of time memes subreddits uh i will be doing more reddit uh reviews in the future i'm think i this is actually a good, I can, I can, I can test the waters here. Uh, are people interested? Uh, I would be an elf. Yeah, that's fine. I'd, I'd, I get being an elf. That's a great choice. But I'd have laser vision and cool breath. Um, would people be interested in seeing me do like a once a month top, of, top posts of r slash fantasy review? Um, I think that'd be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good use of time. They have a lot of interesting discussions there. A lot of things from authors. I've seen a lot of yes, so I think that's confirmed there. Uh, once a month, r slash fantasy reviews. Um, that'd be a lot of fun. And r slash fantasy has been really nice to me. I know I've been shouted out there a couple times. So, again, massively appreciate that from people. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. Does Stormlight Archive pick up after the first two chapters? I thought it was slow and put it down. Uh, I would recommend never judging a book by the first two chapters. And I do remember Stormlight being a little slow at the very beginning, but yeah, it picks up to be one of the best fantasy series currently being worked on. 
and I think in the future could be an argument for uh, best of all time. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the tables here. I want to see, cause this is like, I love the idea of quizzing large sample groups and I, I want to do that. So we're, you're going to get quizzed a little bit and we'll see your responses. So I've heard like, for example, I've never been a huge fan of the Warcraft lore. It's just never hooked me much. I played Warcraft three, the strategy game, but like World of Warcraft didn't interest me. So like beyond that, the lore never hooked me. What fantasy worlds just have not interested you? Just like on concept execution, which ones as you, the audience, you're just not into like what Dune. Okay. I expected to see a couple Dunes cause it is very dry more Dune. Okay. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire, Narnia. Uh, let's see. Hunger Games, Dune, Harry Potter, Narnia, Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth twice back to back. A Song of Ice, Star Wars, Mistborn, the Magicians, Lord of the Rings, Narnia, Star Trek, Hearn. Wow. There's a lot of consistent hate for Narnia here. I did not, not hate, sorry, disinterest in Narnia. Um, that is shocking. A couple of wheel of times. You're bold to say that here, but I understand. I understand your bold stance. Uh, Narnia, Discworld. So it seems like Dune, at least from what I saw, Dune and Narnia, in terms of ones that I'm sure are serious answers, um, were the number one answers there. Quite a bit of Star Wars, which I get the burnout there is strong. Um, <laughs> gentlemen, illegitimate children. <laughs> I like that. Now, you avoided the censor very cleverly. I appreciate it. You're a smart man. Um, that was actually really well done. Neil Gaiman, everything by him. Wow. Well, his writing style can be off-putting. So that one I can kind of get. Dark Materials is overrated in your opinion. All right. Okay. See, that was the one thing that really hooked me to Dark Materials is the world. All right, that's enough sampling. I appreciate it. I, that was interesting. I expected much more diversity. There were a few outside picks, but a lot of consistency. Um, uh, Randolph or uh, who would want to fight Randolph or Adrist? I can't get into that without spoilers here, man. I can't. Um, I can't. I can't talk about that without getting into spoilers. But I will just say on face value, Rand, and we'll have to walk away from there. Um, let's see. Malazan is too complicated for you. Uh, Daniel, what do you think of recreational drugs? This is a channel about fantasy and books. <laughs> that, is, that is what I will say about my opinions on those things. Um, I do not judge people for what they choose to do, but I am very careful about what I do, is my response. Um, <laughs> who is the worst person? I'll censor yours a little bit there. Who's the worst person, Elida or Umbridge? I'd say Umbridge because of the performance we got of that character, I physically hate Dolores Umbridge from Harry yeah. Potter so, so much um, because the actress did an incredible job and I respect her performance immensely, but I find her more hateable because the performance made it more realized. Um, favorite music genre? Classic rock rap. Uh, classic rap. Uh, I have a thing for punk recently. I don't know why. I've been listening to a lot of punk and quite a bit of recently uh more like intense workout music like basically if i'm at the gym i need something with just a crazy beat to keep me going just pound my ears as much as possible i don't know why but i need it to keep going um and always i will forever and always love queen more than pretty much any other band uh how many of those 3,000 30,000 subs are bots i hope none i didn't buy any and I don't think many pillars did. <laughs> I don't think anyone else cares about my channel enough to buy a bot for it. Beep boop. That's all right. <laughs> um, you hate Sansa Stark more than any other character in fantasy. I loved her arc. Uh, Lenny Hetty as a light. Ooh, that's a really good pick. Lena Hetty. I think I said that right. Um, I know you're talking about that. One. That's a good pick. If I had to cast Elida. Oh, who's the actress who just did um, Hereditary or Heredity? She, the, the main mom from that. She would be a fantastic Elida because I need that kind of crazy energy for her performance. So I think I would go with her. And you haven't seen Hereditary or Heredity. I forget which. Amazing horror movie. Check that out. Um, let's see. Tony, is that her name? I, I think that is. Um, do you enjoy steampunk, Lord Green? Please don't call me Lord, unless it's referring to the singer, who's fantastic. 
Uh, I've never really delved into it much. I'm curious about it. Uh, I, I have nothing against it. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of people coming back against the... Uh, <laughs> a lot of people coming back against the uh, anti-Sansa thing. I think if you've completed or you're far in the series, you, you appreciate Elida quite a bit. Um, is Wheel of Time too confusing to get into fantasy? If you mean if it's like your first foray, I actually would not recommend Wheel of Time for your first foray into fantasy just because it's such a commitment. Um, I think I would go with something that's more of just a staple or something a little easier to burn through. If you want the easiest to burn through that everyone loves, I'd go like Mistborn Era 1 just to introduce you to the uh, modern fantasy genre. And then if you switch over to Wheel of Time, you can see what fantasy influence is like because, wow, one influences the other. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, how do you like Powder Mage? Uh, I am currently using it as a place for the book to rest, but I am very much so enjoying it, and you should look forward to the review because I will be keeping a lot of praise, a lot of things that the author did very well. Um, and I've previously reviewed another of his books called Uncanny, Uncanny Collateral, which I also enjoyed from Brian Mc, McClellan. Yeah, Mc, McClellan. I'm sorry, I'm very bad with names. As you all know, thank you for the congratulations. Um, so I, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I'm, I do like Powder Mage quite a bit. Um, do you read eBooks? I break e-readers, so I'm not on purpose. Accidentally, way too much. I need a paperback that I can abuse because I do not respect the things in my hands, apparently, although my phone survives for so long. Don't know why that is. Um, so I can't have e-readers because I'm clumsy and I, I had one years ago and I broke it and I just went, all right, a paperback that I can wreck. I mean, my copy of Way of Kings that you're also on top of is pretty, pretty abused, but I like it. I like a worn in book. A worn in book is a beautiful thing. It, it shows the love that went into it. I'm getting emotional about this. Um, I have my hardcovers that I keep pristine. <laughs> Someone just put on my hardcover a whole word. It got censored, but I love that. Um, yeah, I love a good pristine hardback, but a paperback to carry around and read, there's something beautiful about that. If you're if the back of your book does not have creases, what's going on? What's the purpose of that book? Um, although I have a, a signed copy from Brandon Sanderson of Skyward that no other human is allowed to touch but me. Um, <laughs> because it's Brandon signed it. So it's my, it's my Bay book. That's something I said. I shouldn't be allowed to live stream. I shouldn't be allowed to exist or talk with people. Okay. Focus. Um, <laughs> why is wheel of time a rip off of sort of truth? Well, one came out before the other that I think you have backwards, my friend. Um, we got a forsaken up in here. Hide your kids. Hide your, I didn't see. Uh, maybe there is one in here. All right. Um, Oh, uh, someone asked if you listen to Brandon's BYU writing classes. Do you? I've listened to a few. Um, he gives amazing advice. And I think, you know, I'm always going to credit anything he tells me as a writer above most others. But what I appreciate a lot about his lectures is how much he kind of uh, promotes and just says, hey, like, do what you think is right. You know, he's, he seems more flexible than a lot of authors because so many authors out there they talk like it's do it my way or the highway. And yeah, I'm not a published author, but someone who is in the middle of writing something, all I will tell other people is there's no one formula. It's a creative process. Do what works for you and experiment to see what will work for you. That's just my opinion. What will you read next? Shadowland uh, by Peter something. I'm very bad with uh, names. <laughs> I need to stop saying that. Everyone knows that. Uh, are you reading Six Star Tower book? That is on my TBR and should be within the next month or two, my couple months. Um, let's see. Who's that forsaken? <laughs> Extremely Pokemon. Did I say it like that? That's my bad. What's the title of your upcoming book? Untitled so far. That's a good name. It's titled Untitled so far. Uh, great channel. Great comment. Thank you. Um, what's on my TV red. See, this is why I feel like I need to go back to doing some book to me type videos. Cause people always want to know. Um, my up on my TBR is finishing the broken earth. I want to get that done because I love the first entry. Um, then there is, oh, uh, I kind of want to do a reread of black, uh, leopard, red wolf. There's also more dark tower. There's more classic sci-fi. I want to get more Heinlein under my belt. You guys keep saying sci-fi, but then those videos do terribly. So 
I'm going to keep putting them out. They're going to keep doing terribly, but whatever. Um, and then I did a, a probably my worst review on my channel is my review of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is a terrible thing because it's one of the best books ever written. So I need to go back and uh, and, <laughs> and re-review uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Man, there's 235 people here. That's awesome. You guys are fantastic. Uh, Ender's Game, not the biggest fan, but I had it. I knew everything going in, and eh. um, I love Asimov as well. I haven't, I don't have a review on my channel of the Foundation Trilogy, and it's been ages since I read it, so that's a great excuse to reread it. Foundation Trilogy should also be in the future. Um, I also want to read, oh, there's another fantasy book that's making waves right now that I wanted to pick up, and I can't think of its name. It's new, ah, oh, whatever, I'll think of it later. Uh, let's see. Have you ever read Tarnith Lee's book? No, I have not. Uh, I think Tanith Lee's, not Tarnith Lee's. Uh, Bob Verse is incredible, and everyone should read it. Yes. Uh, do I have a? Do I read Snapchat? Oh, Snapshot. Sorry. Uh, no, I have not. Let's see. Let's see. Should I read? Uh, should I start with Aragon by Christopher Paolini? Many people will say no to that. I think it's so. Okay, this is not meant as an insult. It was written by a 17-year-old who started when I think he was 15. So what he accomplished there is remarkable for his age. He's a good author. With that in mind, Aragon is so derivative of many other fantasy series, it's a fantastic entry to fantasy because you will learn what the genre is. I'm not meaning that to hate it. I think it actually is a good book that is fine for YA readers, people who enjoy YA. So... If you are interested to get into light, easy, tropey fantasy, Aragon's fantastic. That's what it is. Um, it's the Inheritance Cycle. I don't. I can't. I don't think I can speak for the whole Inheritance Cycle because I think one more book came out recently or something. Um, so there will be more in the future. <laughs> Josh, I'm live streaming right now, man. I can't text. I, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but I can't text right now, man. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, wow. Okay. Some fat comments. I mean, a lot of text. Let me get these. Uh, how many people do you think? Oh, sorry. How? Oh man. Uh, how many people do you think will get turned off by the story? If the first two episodes of all time end up feeling too much like Lord of the Rings rehash, I think they can get past the Lord of the Rings rehashing in the first episode because that's okay. Avoiding spoilers, but where I think they're, how I think they're pacing it where the first episode will end will feel incredibly different than how Lord of the Rings really kicks off. Um, thank you so much, uh, Beastie Binster for 99 cents, man. I appreciate it. Um, so I think if they, if they have a quick paced first episode, we can get people there. And I got a lot of faith. Those people um, will do uh, fairly well. It does. I mean, Robert Jordan himself admitted he started the series thinking, I'm going to reinterpret Lord of the Rings type things, but do them from a more realistic, here's how a country kid would react to these things perspective. Um, so I really, really did like that. Um, let's see. In a non-spoiler answer, were you happy with the Witcher ending? Uh, okay, so I ignore my last Witcher review because I was under a false impression when I read it and it drastically affected that review. I'm tempted to delete the entire video. I will be doing a re-review of that book. It's the biggest mistake I've made on my channel, and I still regret it and feel bad about it, uh, because I was under the impression that the uh, games canonically happened after the last book, and that is not necessarily the case. That's all I'm going to say there. Um, author deep dive about Brent Week's incoming. Yes, I just need to do a lot of way too much research. So hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to be creepy. Don't worry. I just need to find as much in the guy as possible because there's not a whole lot out there on the guy. Um, congrats on 30K. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and then good luck feeding your children. I understand that that occasionally can be difficult. <laughs> YouTuber deep dive on myself. I, I have put up enough personal information and you guys, oh, so I don't do vlogs, except there's going to be two in the incoming future. I talked about this in the Discord server, but there will be two more coming. Uh, the first one will be uh, my moving day. I do kind of want to share that with you all. So I'll be recording at various points of my moving day. I'll put that up in a mildly edited, probably not very well edited vlog. 
just to share that process with you. And then when I'm out buying my new setup for fantasy news, for book recordings, bookshelves, and all these things, um, I will be recording that and taking you along for the ride because that is integral to the channel and it's a part of the ride with you guys. So that's absolutely something I will share and record with you. Thank you. Oh my God. Asad Renoa for one of the highest donos I've ever gotten. Uh, Gratz on 30K. Sorry for the lack of update on the Wheel of Time. Game. Wait, what? Oh man, you're totally fine. Uh, thank you so much for an incredible <laughs> dono. I appreciate that. And $30 for 30K. That means so much. Um, if you have a question, let me know. I'll get to it because that was ridiculous. Um, from DeBeastie Bannister again, $5 dono. Thank you so much. Aragon is a great interest of fantasy for me. First series I read in the genre. It's one of the first ones I picked up my own as well. Uh, like your review of the first law series, my personal favorite series. Yeah, first law needs to get more love. I am still amazed. I have not seen it be picked up from one of these flooded adaptations um, aggressively because it, to me, is insanely adaptable. Um, although I've heard rumors and grumblings, but I haven't seen anything that's like firm. This is happening. Let's go. Um, for five dollars from Danny Pesci, congrats! Love the channel. I love you, Danny, and I recognize you. You've been in here multiple times. You've made donuts before. I appreciate it so much. Um, let's see. My first step into uh, was Malazan and got burned out at uh, book since went straight into Lord of the Rings. Malazan is great. Don't get me wrong. I respect it, but I would never recommend it to be someone's first foray into fantasy because it would be a burnout for, I think, just about anybody. You need to have an intense established love for the genre before you jump into that. Um, I think that's a fairly, fairly, uh, I don't think that'll be controversial even to diehard Malazan fans because they are a very self-aware fan base of how difficult their series can be to dive into. Um, every time, like people keep asking me, why aren't you reading more Malazan? It's because I want to read it in a very not busy point in my life so I can just make it my life for four months and then that'll be done. I can't physically devote the amount of time that is obviously needed um, to really memorize, immerse myself in that world. Um, let's see. Favorite fantasy army. Ah, favorite fantasy army. That's this is gonna be one of the ones I answer. I regret my answer like in five minutes after I say it. Uh, either the Aiel, the Band of the Red Hand, Rohan, or mm. I'm thinking way too hard about this. I need to just say those are my three answers and stop. So I'm going to do that. Um, God, that's a good question. Ah, uh, I, I got, I love Rohan though. I, I got to love Rohan just for a few key moments. Uh, Bridge four is not an army. That's like, that's a squad at best at best. Otherwise I would have said them immediately. <laughs> uh, no, Sean, I love the Sean Chan. Don't get me wrong, but there's better armies even within wheel of time. Um, oh, sorry. I, I keep getting, <laughs> so every time someone tries to mention like certain series, YouTube, like can't handle it. Um, thank you, uh, thank you for being my guide through wheel of time. Just started my reread. Congrats on 30 K you and my dad just started a reread. So you're right along with him. And I'm so happy that I, I'm getting people into wheel of time. Um, so awesome. I'd love to see if there should be a we need to create a channel on the discord server. That's literally a hundred percent. Just here is uh, people's updates on wheel of time. Cause I would, I would love to see that. Um, did you enjoy what uh, the 100% the ending wheel time ending? It's perfect. No, I, I don't think the wheel of time ending is perfect. I would put it personally at about an 85%. Um, yeah, I think it's about that. Why are people saying F? What, what did I do? F means I did something bad. Oh, it's one person putting F. Okay, never mind. Um, oh, now that's more Fs. Great. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dimitri Alexander, for $2. I appreciate it. Be careful about spamming F. You will automatically just start getting blocked for the rest of the chat because YouTube is really like, if people repeat, they just put you out. Um, F, I guess. Chill. 
Um, let's see. Z. Okay, someone's changing it up. Someone's spicy. It's a spicy choice. Um, are you going to do a special video for the Wheel Time TV series like you did for the last season of Game of Thrones? Yes. So my reviewing the last season of Game of Thrones was a test run for how I will review um, every TV show going forward that I do reviews for. I will be staying up. I'll be doing midnight reviews. And then I'll be putting them out. And then for Wheel of Time, especially, I'll be doing midnight reviews. And then I'm going to be doing episode examinations is the plan where I do like a 40 minute deep dive of everything I didn't and did like about the episode, the choices they make, the differences from the books already coming through. Um, but that'll just be a, uh, my entire chat just went blank. Uh, okay. Sci-fi for beginners. Uh, I w okay, do you want classic or do you want modern? Classic, I'd go Foundation Trilogy. It's fantastic and you really can't go wrong there. And modern, I'd say Bobverse or The Martian. Two very different routes, but both great. Um, how would you go about making an interesting magic system? I'm doing it now, and I think the easiest way to get an immediate interesting magic system is find a real world type thing you can pull from and then expand on it, make it Play-Doh, change it how you need to, because that's what I'm currently doing. I'm, I'm pulling from real world examples and molding it however I feel uh, needs to be. I just saw someone mention Red Rising, which made me feel like I need to say on my TVR soon is Red Rising as well. I'd say that's also within a couple of months. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to that one because that's that's another one that since the beginning of the channel, uh, people have been asking for. So I'm very, I'm very excited for that. I need to reschedule one of my videos because I'm about to have another du duo release tomorrow. I need to, that'll... I'm not allowed to forget that. I'm going to remember to do that uh, soon. Oh, that will be soon. <laughs> Hard or soft magic system depends on the author, but in general, in general, not always hard magic systems. Um, like Stephen King has a soft magic system going throughout his universes, and that's fine. That's all he needs. He doesn't need a hard magic system because... You know, it's it's a horror story. You don't. It would take you out of the horror elements if suddenly they're like, "Well, then you can't do beyond." The, like that's not what that needs. Favorite magic system, Wheel of Time, hands down. Uh, no, no, no question. Um, let's see. Uh, I just answered that earlier, but yes, I have seen Brandon's uh, college lectures on uh, uh, YouTube. Yearly TBR. I don't plan that far ahead, my guy. Not even close. Uh, oh man, uh, five dollars from Mithril DM. First of all, Mithril. Great reference. Dig it. DM, are you a dungeon master? That's awesome. I've been looking for a DD and d group here in uh, Columbus, but I've not had the best luck with it. Wait, hold up. Throwback on the channel of when, before most of you were here. Uh, I, uh, like one of my first live talks with, I think it was the Discord server. Correct me if I'm wrong, people who have been here for a while. I was talking with everybody, having a great time, and then the power went out for the city I lived in Huntsville, Alabama lost power. And I, uh, I literally was like, well, we're done talking, I guess. <laughs> and I, uh, I had to like go, I just like looked what was happening. Apparently like a generator somewhere burst into flame. So if you were there for that, sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. 20 from uh, Greg Stokely. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Dale, congrats on 30 K. Just started the One Power Podcast. Uh, love to have you on as a guest. Yeah, reach out to me on uh, Twitter. We'll see what we can work out. Uh, that sounds great. Um, I try to check my message requests on Twitter and Instagram, but I, I can't respond to them all. I probably get like 40 to 50 people uh, reaching out to me every couple of days, and I can't respond to everybody. It's funny. People keep saying, like, well, you, why can't you respond to all them? And why can't you do this? And why can't you respond to all the emails? Because like if you add it all up, it's hours and hours out of my day, and I'm already pushing it, so I can't. Sorry, it's not not any personal. I want to believe me. Um, as I just said, Red Rising is soon to be R within the next couple of months. Um, <laughs> idea for your book title, Limey. Wait, what? Limey backinners take a, a ride on a Bodie McBoat face. I'm going for a slightly different tone than that. Uh, but I do appreciate the thought and effort. I also want to say uh, a thank you again to Idaz Rona for the $30 dono. Again, that was insane. And again, Greg Stokely, thank you for the $20 dono. Those mean a lot. And I believe I've seen you in here before, Greg. Uh, so appreciate your work. Any content creators who are on that hustle, 
That's awesome. Um, and for anyone who's starting a podcast, like Greg seems to be, uh, you know, reach out to other podcasts. Networking is the best thing you can do. Just please keep it professional. How do people not do that? Um, just keep it professional, be friendly, get going from there. And, uh, you know, things, things, uh, things will work out. That's one of the networking is absolutely king when it comes to content creation without a doubt. And especially when so many people, everyone I've met pretty much who makes this kind of content is a great person. I've, I've never worked with a creator who I didn't think was a good person at their core. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, people are talking about writing uh, a parody of my book, I think. Awesome. Uh, no stalking? Yes, please don't stalk me. I've had instances where if you're in the Discord, you know I've, I've vented there and put up things. Uh, don't try to find my phone number. Don't try to find my Snapchat. Don't add me on LinkedIn. I don't know why people are doing that. Uh, I, I'm, it's not a way to be my friend. I'm just going to think it's weird. Please don't do that unless I specifically give it to you. Um, Let's see. Is 12 Kings of Skara on your radar? It is. Or sorry, Saraka. Dude, me and names. I don't know if it's dyslexia or I'm just broken as a human being. Um, top five TV shows. Last time I did this list, I did a horrible job. I actually removed my top 10 TV shows list because I uh, <laughs> I just looked back and I was like, that's like the worst list I think I've ever made. That's a horrible, horrible list. So... I, uh, let's see, top five TV shows, Ma uh, Monty Python, The Holy Grail, Breaking Bad, um, The Simpsons, I've been binging it, and man, The Simpsons is fantastic. If you're, if you're less than five seasons, I have trouble really faithfully saying you or the show, but I will say Westworld has earned it. Westworld is just awesome. And I think the last one I'll go is the new uh, Battlestar Galactica series because I'm a huge, huge fan of it. And the uh, that was massive. That, that was really influential in how I view sci-fi as well. Uh, if you have not read or watched the uh, the new Battlestar Galactica that came out in the early 2000s, it is um, really, really awesome. Uh, mods, there's a few things slipping through here, guys. <laughs> um yeah, uh, yeah. J.K. Rowling did confirm four new Harry Potter books. I was defending Harry Potter for so long. I was, I was swinging left and right, but her choices have been so bizarre. I hear four more books, and I can't think anything. But oh no! <laughs> and I, I here's this is coming from someone who loves the first seven, who thinks the first seven Harry Potter books are wonderful why a the transition into adult fantasy but i i can't i can't defend her after poo gate and that's that is what that shall be known as uh thank you so much for dimitri alexander for another 20. i have not read metro 2030 but i played the games and the games were unbelievably great especially with their i don't mean to keep saying this but their atmosphere um and i plan on reading the books because i've been on a russian uh vit vibe recently so i plan on reading more things from russian authors uh, uh, Pooh Gates was when J.K. Rowling decided to talk about the fact that wizards disappear their poo in Hogwarts instead of going to use the bathroom up until a certain point because Hogwarts didn't have plumbing. And then people pointed out that first years, second years, third years, I think even maybe, no, it's just third years, don't actually learn those spells. So she created a plot inconsistency uh, in her own world with that. Um, yeah, so that, that was the, the lamest thing I've seen an author do to their own series. But with Cinnamon Please, which is a great name, Cinnamon is an underused spice and is uh, delicious. I, I, okay, I'll answer your question in a second with Cinnamon Please, but I have to take a side thing. Um, so I, like the, one of the few recipes that's handed down in my family that I am good at making is this double chocolate mocha cheesecake and I make it a little bit different than the recipe because I double the cinnamon and it works. So if I ever meet you guys, just demand that I make you a double chocolate mocha cheesecake with extra cinnamon. And I will do that for you because it's, it's, it's so good. But if you watch me make it, you'd realize that it's so bad for you. So insanely bad for you. Quick clarification, the JK Rowling Harry Potter books, they are short stories. 
or, or like a brief small. So it's not like four more full Harry Potter books. So, um, but oh, with Cinnamon, please ask me top five movies. That is constantly changing. But right now I just watched, rewatched uh, Blade Runner 2049 and I, I'm absolutely head over heels in love with that movie. Um, I think it's better than the original, uh, which is, might be controversial, but to me it just is. Uh, I'll, I'll put Fellowship of the Ring in there. Huge Fellowship of the Ring fan. Um, uh, I'm trying not to go with cliche picks. I'm trying to censor out cliche picks and just be like, nah, I'm not going to say that. But I do have to say Casablanca um, because it's perfect. And I don't, I'm not going to say Godfather because it's too cliche. So two more. Um, 12 Angry Men. Yes. I was, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. 12 Angry Men. Uh, the original is so wonderfully shot. The way the camera slowly gets closer and closer, the way it's just in one room till the very end, the acting, that, that movie is again, perfect. And then the final choice, I'm going to go with something fun. Or was that four? Or was that five? Was that four or five? Um, someone tell me here. Was that four or five? Four. Okay. So five, uh, Fifth one will be. Uh, let's go outside the ballpark here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm choose my favorite comedy. Of, no, I haven't said a single Kubrick film. What's wrong with me? Two, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. I, I have to put a Kubrick in. So there's another Kubrick. If I did that list over again, there'd be more Kubrick. Um, 12 Angry Men. Okay. It's on YouTube for free, by the way. So if you haven't seen it, after this is over, go watch it. And it, it's. It's one of those movies, it's black and white, it's old, but it does not hold the movie back from being what it is because it transcends its eight, its time restrictions because it's just a remarkable, everyone's performance is just spectacular. And it's the story, the way it's shot. It, it, uh, I, I, yeah, I'll forever, I watch the original one, the older one, not the new one. Um, I'll forever be a huge fan of that. Uh, okay, people want top five video games. I'll do a top five video games. Uh, Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 3 was really disappointing, but Mass Effect 2, um, Super Smash Bros, uh, Diablo 2, Pokemon Blue, Blastoise Forever. Get that Charizard crap out of here. Charizard's nothing. Um, and angry comments start now. Uh, <laughs> uh, Witcher 3, and I think that's 5. Yeah, that's 5, I think. Uh, I haven't played Last of Us. That is one that I want to play. Bioshock, I couldn't really get into as much as most people. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic is easily in my top 10. I've never played God of War. Uh, Metroid Prime is good. Metroid Prime is good. Diablo 2 is the best dungeon crawler, hands down, all time, no debate. Fight me. Um, wow. Wow. This is the fastest this chat is gone. <laughs> uh, and no one's mad about uh, me saying that Blastoise is better than Charmander. Or sorry, uh, Squirtle's better than Charmander. Because he is, factually. Turtle's better than Lizard's. Um, thank you, Liam, for the three uh, euro, three three fifty euro money. Um, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it, man. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, oh man, I've been playing Skyrim VR. Amazing experience. Um, I was able to get the new VR headset. That was like I've been saving money like crazy. Those were my big expenditures, and wow, Oculus knocked it out of the park. Um, Shadow Mortar was really, really good. Um, yeah, the Skyrim VR spiders have caused me to squeal like a child repeatedly. So that's a thing. Um, let's see. I'm going to wrap this up in about five five minutes, guys. So if there's any more questions, let me know. Um, let's see. Record the VR spiders. I can't. I don't, dude. Every time I've tried to record myself gaming, I'm sorry. I feel like my nose is bleeding, and it's not. That's a weird cringe moment. Moving on. Uh, Every time I've tried to record myself uh, playing a game, it's just gone like terribly. I either have to re-record for some reason. As someone who's a software engineer, hardware hates me. So the amount of hardware you have to set up for that, it just it goes poorly every time. It just goes wrong. I don't know why, but I'll try again. I do plan on starting a Twitch channel. We'll see how it goes. Um, Cad Swain versus Taim? Taim? Taim wins that, but I think you put it backwards. I think spell check got you there. Um, Dreamcast for Wheel of Time show. Oh, uh, Danny DeVito in every single role. I am serious. I am not joking. Danny DeVito in every single role for Wheel of Time, this is not a joke, is the best option for the Wheel of Time to go in. Danny DeVito in a dress is Barrelane. 
Danny DeVito in a cloak as Taim. That's the best show ever. Fight me. Um, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Favorite piece of satire. I, I can't answer that. I can't off the top of my head, man. I can't. Um, top five must read fantasy books. Boy, did I just put out a video that you will like a few days ago. I think you should go check out my video backlog. <laughs> um, Danny DeVito is Forrest Gump. He could actually, like, if he did that seriously, he could probably do it. Um, uh, what do we think of Master and Margarita? It's in my top 20 books of all time. I thought Master and Margarita, not only because of the book, but the story around it, the history of the book, and when it was written, and the author's bravery in writing it is, it deserves to be remembered as one of the great pieces of human literature. And I, uh, I'm, I'm, still kind of like getting over just how uh, spectacular I keep using. I'm nervous because I'm live streaming. So excuse the overuse of words. I'll think of another word. Stupendous. Uh, the master of Margarita really was. Uh, I guess I have read good omens. I have a review of it on my channel. I am sorry. This right here itches like an insane amount. Thank you so much for another 99 cents for uh, the beastie banister. Are you just donating every time you agree with me on something? Is that, is that what's going on? You're just like, yeah, 99 cents right there. <laughs> that makes me feel weird, but I like it. Um, <laughs> uh, oh man. Uh, Laura Fitzgerald just got censored and approved. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. Dollar from Ryan Gaines. Awesome. Uh, do you consider graphic audio reading a book? I've never done the graphic audio experience and I can't answer that until I do. Um, you know, Laura, it got approved by the mods. My mods are working their hearts out. Shout out to the moderators, Noshi, Yannick, Robin. You guys are the backbone of the channel. You know that. I love you. I will be the best man at your wedding or your bride. You choose. Um, <laughs> do you like manga? I've never really given it much of a try. Um, I've never played a Dark Souls game outside of just like playing it long enough to rage quit. I know that's like a really bad thing, so hate me. Um, I don't know if Yenix is pronounced Y or J. I don't know if it's Jenik or Yenik, and I'm afraid to ask because I love him and I don't want him to hate me. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, what TV show are you watching right now? Uh, my girlfriend and I are currently re-watching um, Stranger Things to prepare for its new release. So we're really digging that. I forgot just how much I love Hopper. He is like an absolute delight. <laughs> um, hello from Romania. Hello back from Columbus, Ohio, because uh, I've never been to your country. I may never be, but if you would have me, I will come. I will, I will stay on your couch way too long. It'll be weird. You'll be like, oh, it's cool at first. And then like six months in it, you're like, leave now. This is awful. Uh, hello from Serbia. No, you're kidding. And you're no way. Really? Serbia, Scotland. That's amazing. Jesus. Uh, India. He's not the best hopper. I have a theory that they're the same hopper. Let that marinate in your head for a while. Croatia. Hello from nothing. <laughs> Ireland. I lived in your country for a while. It was amazing. Canada. What's up, my northern brother? Um, why can't Canada and the United States just merge? Just call it Connect, 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 America, Amanda, Nanada, Amanda, Nanada. There we go. There it is. And it's uh, it's a new country. And um, I can't make that joke. That'd make people upset. All right, moving on. Ohio. We got someone in Ohio. I should do an Ohio meetup. Why not? I might get stabbed, but it's worth it. <laughs> okay. Sweden. I want to live in your country. Utah, UK. That's awesome because I still need to have my surgery. Oh man, what's that in response to? Also, are you serious? Are you having surgery? I hope you're okay, my guy. I love everything you do, so you better stay healthy. Uh, <laughs> can't shell 100K right now. I don't, I, 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 I missed something and I'm hoping you're okay. I need to scroll up because I care. <laughs> I care too much. Um, South Africa, Fargo, North Dakota. Florida. I didn't see anything else from Kings and Generals. Now I'm just concerned. Canadian healthcare. Oh, oh yeah. We can't merge. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Your free healthcare system is awesome. Um, I dated a girl from Canada for a while and 
it was just, I was like, why you're at such a risk now with your healthcare here. And also when I was in Ireland, my roommate, let's, okay. We're going to end this with a brief story time, everybody. And this will be how it ends. Brief story time. I'm no longer in touch with this dude. So he won't care. I hope that I'm telling 236 people this story. Uh, <laughs> I'll use fake names. Let's call him Johnny. Johnny, uh, we, we went out to a bar in Ireland and had a good old time. I was 21 at the time. He was like 20, but he was legally drinking there. He was very excited about it. He drank quite a bit. Not enough that he was like sick. That's not where this story is going. If you think it's going that way, it's not going that way. It's going that way in a different way. Um, and on the way back to our place, he's like, hey, I want to stop at this little food truck place and get some meat. And I'm like, Johnny, not his real name. Do you remember to keep using the real uh, fake name? Johnny, that's meat on a cart. It's not a food truck. It's meat on a stick on a cart. And it's two in the morning. That meat has been there for a while. And he's like, nah, I got this. No, my roommate in Ireland I lived with because I was living with random people in Ireland. And I could talk about a different roommate I had in Ireland who I did not get along with. Um, but Johnny was great. That's not his real name, but Johnny was great. Um, and so he stops and he goes and he's like, I'm going to get this. He gets like a bread meat thing and he eats it. And I'm like, that was a mistake, but okay. And we get back to our place. I lay down to go to bed. About an hour later on my door... I need to go to the hospital. <laughs> uh, George, I, I mean, Johnny. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's gone now. Uh, I opened the door. I have never seen someone look so sick. Like to the point where I was not even questioning. Yeah. Hospital. His skin had changed color. He looked thinner. Don't know how that was a thing. And just like awful. So I was like, we're calling now. Called him an ambulance. They came, took him. He went. Had no way to get in touch with him because he left his phone. That was probably my bad. Should have made sure he uh, got his phone. And like a day later, I think it was the next night at like 9 p.m., he came back. And I was like, dude, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I got fluids, everything. It was just really, really, really bad food poisoning. This is in Cork, Ireland. And I was like, all right, how much did it cost you? And he was like, everything came out to like 30 bucks that includes ivs getting i think he got a stomach pumped or something like that food the stay everything 30 bucks they saw him right away he was put out within like the next day amazing care they gave him an ambulance ride there and then just a ride he, i think he like ubered back or something but i was just like 30 dollars i sprained my finger and it was many magnitudes times more than that Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that's that story. It's just the, the healthcare system story there. Um, <laughs> uh, I got to look up who George is and well, I don't have him on Facebook or anything anymore. So good luck with that. Um, yeah. I don't think anyone's going to have the amount of treatment would cost me a kidney in my country. That's amazing. Yeah. The fact that it was $30, I was legitimately stunned by. Um, yeah, I, have, I have multiple, uh, multiple stories from Ireland that would be wonderful to share. Maybe only for Patreons, a couple of them, because I trust the patrons. I, pr I trust the patrons uh, a little bit more because I know they're fans on a level uh, where they won't blackmail me one day down the road. Uh, but that has been your 30K live stream. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Josh, for congratulating me over text during. I actually really thought that was funny. I appreciate that. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful one like and subscribe if you have not already and uh, i will talk to you all tomorrow with another edition of fantasy news so enjoy that